Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Roda Palace Sheikh Sultan bin Ismail Al Thani and his accompanying delegation on the occasion of his official visit to the kingdom. His Majesty held a lunch banquet. His Majesty held a lunch banquet in honor of Sheikh Sultan and his accompanying delegation. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued Edict Number no. 3 of 2018 on amending some provisions of the executive regulation determining salaries and benefits and prescribing eligibility and conditions for employees who are subject to the civil service law promulgated by Edict Number no. 77 of 2013. According to the Edict, Article 11 of the regulation was replaced by the following. A social allowance shall be granted to the employee in two categories according to the social situation. The edict also stipulates that Article 15 regarding the inducement allowance shall be cancelled. Ministers and CSB presidents each in their capacity shall implement the edict which takes effect a day after its publication in the official Gazette. His Royal Highness Prime Minister also issued Edict No. 4 of 2018 on transferring the head of the Bahraini diplomatic mission to the UAE, Ambassador Mohammed Hamad al Maouda, to the Foreign Ministry's General Court. The Foreign Minister shall implement the edict which takes immediate effect. 
A telephone call was held between His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and the Deputy Commander of Kuwait's National Guard, Sheikh Mish'al Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah. The two sides have reviewed the historic brotherly relations between Bahrain and Kuwait and the continuous development of cooperation at all levels. The Deputy Commander of the Kuwaiti National Guard noted His Royal Highness's role in supporting and developing fraternal relations between the two countries. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today a number of royal family members, representatives, council members, businessmen and social figures. His Royal Highness highlighted that the Bahraini society is cohesive in its nature and the strong ties that bond this society together are the basis that Bahrain's future would be built upon. His Royal Highness continued to say that all that leads to the disruption of this cohesion is rejected as the social media channels have created a wide atmosphere that should be used for the purpose of development and not to tear down the kind reputation of people. He stressed that, that the impact of these channels when exploited in an abusive manner is similar to terrorism as both lead to undermining stability. During the meeting, His Royal Highness hailed the efforts made to elevate the kingdom's status in international sports arenas, which was demonstrated by the National Basketball Juniors team's victory in the 16th GCC Championship. His Royal Highness congratulated the chairman of Bahrain Basketball Association the BBA, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, on the occasion expressing his pride in this victory. His Royal Highness also paid tribute to the efforts exerted by members of the legislative authority in serving the nation, lauding their role in serving the country through voicing the needs of the people.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at the Dubai Palace, the U.S. Ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Justin Cyberwell. His Royal Highness highlighted the course of Bahraini-U.S. relations and the development it witnesses, noting that political, security, and military cooperation between the two countries support bilateral relations and efforts aiming at reinforcing the region's security and stability. His Royal Highness lauded the efforts of the U.S. led by President Donald Trump in maintaining the world and the region region's security and stability and the achievements of the new American administration. He also hailed the American administration's understanding of the challenges facing the region, at the forefront of which terrorism and supporting all efforts to thwart them. His Royal Highness affirmed that all religions call for peace, coexistence and security. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister discussed with the ambassador a number of regional and international issues. For his part, the U.S. ambassador noted the development to the kingdom witnesses, hailing the government's keenness led by His Royal Highness as a Prime Minister to strengthen relations and cooperation between Bahrain and the U.S. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at the Gdaibiya Palace the Ambassador of the Philippines to Bahrain, Alfonso Ferdinand. The Prime Minister praised the continuous development of the ties between Bahrain and the Philippines at all fields in light of the two countries' keenness on strengthening cooperation to achieve the two common interests in political, economic, commercial and investment fields. His Royal Highness hailed the contributions of the Filipino community in Bahrain to developing the kingdom. He expressed aspirations to further strengthen cooperation and to provide a comfortable environment for the Filipino community in appreciation of their efforts. For his part, the Ambassador of the Philippines expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his keenness on developing bilateral cooperation. He also praised the progress of Bahrain in different fields, expressing his country's keenness on fostering cooperation at all levels. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and Chairman of the Economic Development Board, the EDB, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired today a meeting of the EDB Board. His Royal Highness drew attention to the EDB's range of achievements in 2017, noting that in working alongside public and private sector partners to develop Bahrain's key economic sectors, the EDB continues to deliver significant progress in line with His Majesty the King's vision for a modern, diverse economy. The Crown Prince praised the EDB's role in supporting the growth of Bahrain's non-oil sector and its contribution to GDP, noting that EDB initiatives reinforced diversification efforts by ensuring the private sector remains the primary engine of growth. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of building on the successes of 2017, highlighting the need to continue attracting high levels of new investment into the kingdom in order to ensure Bahrain's key sectors benefit from global expertise and knowledge. 
knowledge transfer. Israel Han is a crown prince who welcomed the EDB's new board members and wished them success in their roles and thanked the former EDB board members for their efforts in ensuring that the EDB successfully reached its previous objectives. Chief Executive of the EDB, Khaled Ramehi, highlighted that EDB surpasses its 2017 targets in terms of new projects and local job creation, with the 2,831 new jobs in the private sector created, as well as direct investment which doubled in 2017 to reach 733 million US dollars. He noted that Bahrain's non-oil sector grew by 4.8% in 2017, one of the highest levels of growth in the region, and now constitutes more than 80% of the kingdom's GDP. He also emphasized EDB's growth contribution to diversification, noting that since EDB's inception in 2001, the nine oil sector has achieved an average of 7.5% annual growth. Eramehi summarized EDB's advocacy initiatives aimed at enhancing the competitiveness of target sectors, promoting economic openness, and cultivating an environment conducive to entrepreneurship. He highlighted EDB's ongoing work with stakeholders in the public and private sectors, which led to the launch of a number of initiatives in 2017, including the creation of a regularity sandbox and crowdfunding regulation, measures to protect minority shareholders' rights, commercial registration of incubators, accelerators and startups, and the establishment of the SME board. Erramehi noted that the kingdom saw a number of large investments in 2017, including by Amazon Web Services, which announced the opening of its first region in the Middle East by 2019, as well as investments by Mondelez and Paytaps. The chief executive noted that these success stories are, trend are testaments to Bahrain's ability to attract quality investment by introducing investors to the kingdom business landscape and value proposition, including its strength as a hub from which to access neighbourhoods markets. Eramehi also discussed the new initiatives the EDB is targeting in order to further support the kingdom's transition to a digital economy, improve business licensing procedures, advance the SME ecosystem and to enhance the logistics and manufacturing sectors. The EDB board members discussed the SME board and its importance to increasing the sector's contribution to GDP and exports while noting its role in creating quality job opportunities for Bahrainis by supporting SMEs to the fostering of innovation, skills development and enhancing success access to finance. The meeting also discussed the upcoming launch of Fintech Bay, which will play a key role in facilitating collaboration between all market participants and stakeholders in the fintech ecosystem and will be the biggest dedicated fintech hub in the region. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, Hassan Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, congratulated the UAE Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Presidential Affairs, Chairman of the Abu Dhabi Equestrian Club, Hassan Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Hayyan, on the winning of rider Rashid Al Janabi of El Wathba Stables, the race of the UAE President. His Highness pointed out that the victory is a clear evidence of the great potentials of El Wathba best table and its riders. Azana Sheikh Nasser hailed the directives and support of UAE President Azana Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Dan Hayyan, Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE and Ruler of Dubai, Azana Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, and Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, Deputy Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, Azana Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Dan Hayyan. To equestrian sports, His Highness said that the royal team's participation was aimed at maintaining the fitness and the health of the horses, pointing out that all the loyal, all the royal the Royal team's participation is the, in the championship is subject to continuous technical evaluation to identify the strengths of the team. On the sidelines of the race, Azana Sheikh Nasser met with Azana Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, where they exchanged cordial talks. Azana also met with a number of riders participating in the race.
The national basketball team won the Gulf Corporation Council, the GCC Youth Basketball Championship held at Sultan Qabu Sports Complex in the Omani capital, Masqat. The president of Bahrain Basketball Association is Haina Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, along with a number of sports figures from the GCC, attended the concluding match. His Highness Sheikh Isa was keen on witnessing the match to support the national team. He dedicated the achievement to the leadership headed by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, stating that the achievements made by the Bahraini basketball team is a result of the support of the leadership. He added that the national team deserves the title, hailing the achievements. His his Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali noted that the achievement translates the directives of His Highness Sheikh Nasser of making this year a year of gold, adding that Bahraini basketball team became the first multiplayer sport to win a gold medal after the directive. He added that the achievement affirms the success of Bahraini Basketball Association's development policy. He affirmed that the board of directors will continue beyond the stage to develop the team and its level, stating that the kingdom awaits an Asian event for which they should be prepared. He also congratulated and uh, thanked the team players and the technical and administrative authorities for their efforts in achieving consecutive victories, wishing the team success in the upcoming championships. Azara Sheikh Isa was keen on visiting the team players at the Gulf Delegation Accommodation Hotel, where he gave them directives and expressed his support. For his part, the national team coach, Captain Salman Ramadan, expressed pleasure for the achievement, adding that it is everyone's responsibility to maintain this level of excellence. His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa and the national basketball team delegation were received at Bahrain National Airport by the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Minister Hisham bin Mohammed Al Jodar, Bahrain Olympic Committee, BOC's Secretary General Abdurrahman Sadiq Askar, and a number of senior officials where they conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King for charity work and youth affairs. Chairman of Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who commended the performance of of the national team. Electricity and Water Affairs Minister Dr. Abdel Hussein Mirza opened yesterday the International Conference on Green Cities, Sustainable Buildings and Renewable Energy organized by the Kingdom University. The event was held in cooperation with the International Renewable Energy Network under the theme Green Cities, Sustainable Buildings and Renewable Energy. Present were senior officials and participants from various government and private sectors, including Sudanese Minister of Urban Planning and Water Resources Dr. Babkar Ahmed Babkar, Network President Dr. Ali Sayer announced an honorary membership of the network of Dr. Mirza for his role and contributions in the renewable energy fields in Bahrain and to achieve a constructive cooperation with local and international organizations and bodies working in the field. The minister delivered a keynote speech about Bahrain's sustainable energy sector and the importance of leadership as well as its endeavor to secure sustainable development. He said one of the important steps taken by the government was to secure a green and clean environment and set of the Sustainable Energy Unit in cooperation with the United Nations Development Program, the UNDP. He added that the government has set national goals to achieve specific percentages of total renewable energy, such as 5% of total energy to be renewable in Bahrain by 2025, as well as a goal of increasing this to 6% by 2026. The minister also spoke about the details of the National Energy Efficiency Plan, the NAEAP, and the National Renewable Energy Plan, the NREAP, and explained Bahrain's plans in the field of sustainable energy and the recent steps adopted by the Council of Ministers to build a solar power station of 100 megawatts capacity. He also spoke of the Council of Ministers' decision to improve the regulations relating to the solar energy distribution on the roofs of houses and facilities and the procedures for their safe connection to the government electricity grid, including the net metering system to monitor any quantities of electricity pumped into the government network.
work. Dr. Mirza thanked the efforts of the organizers and stressed the importance of such events that enrich the scientific and research arena and the fields of renewable energy and sustainable development. The opening ceremony also included a speech by University President Professor Mohammed Jamil Terro, during which he welcomed the dignitaries and participants. He thanked the minister for his support and patronage. He also welcomed the Sudanese minister and thanked the speakers and supporters of the Sustainable Energy Unit, GPIC, Babco, Tatwir, Minister of Housing, Northern Governorates, and Unido's Bahrain branch. The conference was attended by a number of professional speakers from Bahrain, Britain, Italy, Romania, and Malaysia. The conference also focused on presenting ongoing researchers and studies in universities and research centers and to develop building systems that comply with modern environment requirements. The Minister of Health, Faiqa bin Saeed al-Salah, announced that the results of the National Health Survey 2018 will be able to meet a large number of Bahrain's 2030 Vision's needs and enhance its health system through providing an accurate health database for the population. The Minister stated that the implementation of the strategic project comes in line with the government's work program that aims to provide comprehensive health care to all citizens and residents, affirming that the survey results will provide the necessary indicators for the Ministry's health plan requirements to create its future strategy of fighting diseases. For his part, the Chief Executive of Information and E-Government Authority, Mohammed Ali Al-Qaid, affirmed that the survey is one of the most important surveys implemented by the authority as it falls within the overall strategy of the National Statistical Systems Development in Bahrain. Al-Qaid added that an electronic program which the civil team will use to collect data had been provided. The first deputy chairman of the Shura Council, Jamal Mohammed Fakhro, today presided the council's weekly meeting. The council congratulated His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Spring Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister on the 17th anniversary of the National Action Charter. The Shura members praised the wise leadership's support to the plans and strategies that contribute to achieving sustainable development. The session started by reading the letter it received from the Speaker of the Representatives. Council regarding a draft law regulating terrorism, a proposal amending some provisions of the law of the Judicial Authority and a proposal amending the real estate renting law. The privatization of health checkups for expats is a project that comes with a number of social and economic benefits for the kingdom. More details in this report with Mohammed Shaban. Since its launch late last year, the privatization of pre-employment medical tests for expatriates has been successfully meeting the overall objectives of the government's vision as depicted through the government form. The initiative is meant to boost the private sector's participation in health, limit burdens on government facilities and protect the kingdom from any communicable diseases that might go undetected with the long waiting times. All these constitute several of the main pillars that make up the kingdom's national health plan 2016-2025. Uh, currently, the worker can um, have the appointment within three days at the average uh, when coming from Bahrain. And uh, on the other hand, the available appointments has increased. Uh, before, it used to be in the, uh, only limited in one health center, government center. Uh, appointments may take up to three months and the available appointments are only 200 per day. Now with the increase of healthcare facilities that we're given permission from NHRA to uh, conduct the service has increased from 200 per, per day to 700 per day. The Arazi Health Center used to be the only accredited center to conduct these pre-employment checkups. Thanks to the project, Bahrain now has 19 different centers that are accredited to perform these tests, with the Ministry of Health taking a more supervisory or regulatory role. Uh, for the time being, uh, we are having around 18 uh, centers uh, that took over uh, using this uh, project and uh, they're checking these, uh, um, uh, these uh, expatriates in their centers and after finishing they will be uh, sending us the reports uh, with the data entered and uh, we will be uh, taking the care of monitoring and doing the final approval for these uh, cases. 
The project also has economic and social benefits, mainly attributed to the reduction in waiting time to book appointments, where workers can soon assume their duties without administrative delays. These four months keeps the uh, worker's application pending and the rest of his process not concluded which is something that could affect his uh, life and his uh, uh, residency in Bahrain and the way he would conduct the rest of his affairs. The privatization of the health check has meant that we, w we go from four months waiting to 48 hours of concluding this process. The privatization of pre-employment tests is yet another milestone in the government's action plan that works towards bettering the services provided in the kingdom to nationals and expats alike. Mohamed Shaban, Bahrain Television News.